Orama is a word meaning broad perspective, and that's what we're trying to do in our research institute, which is a multidisciplinary team. And we're looking to address real problems in the 21st century and find solutions that relate to promoting well-being and resilience across the lifespan, and also promoting mental health and recovery where there is mental illness. The thing that sets Arama apart from other mental health research initiatives is that we have a focus both on well-being and mental health. So this joint focus means that we can actually work on solutions for a diverse array of communities. We partner with schools, non-government organisations or NGOs, and we're also partnering with federal departments, federal providers. We also partner with mental health providers and we have a number of projects in those settings. In particular, we work very closely with the providers of eating disorder services to help understand what aspects of the programs are working the best and what additions or changes need to be made to these services. COVID was a very interesting time for the world. One of the things we found was that well-being plummeted. And there were some populations that we looked at that were particularly at risk. University students were particularly at risk. Health workers, particularly frontline health workers, Indigenous health workers. We were particularly interested to see how these things tracked through the general community and then through the specific populations. We developed an intervention that included all of these specific strategies. We wanted to also track wellbeing, so we developed what we're calling the Be Well Tracker. We've developed the Be Well Plan. And then during COVID, of course, we couldn't roll out the Be Well Plan in face-to-face in -face groups as we had been doing up until that point. So we put it all online and we now have an app as well. And that really came about from our ability to translate basic findings and how useful are they and to pull it all together. And we now have this platform where we can actually intervene at scale. My research area is in the field of veteran wellbeing uh, and transition. Uh, veterans uh, experience uh, challenges when they leave the military and that transition back into society uh, involves uh, finding relevant pathways through education, employment, housing, justice, community and family, as well as physical and mental health issues that veterans face. We're undertaking the first national study of veterans in incarceration across Australia. Also, we've been looking at the question of institutional abuse and organisational reform in the Defence Force. One of the other key areas that we've uh, been looking at is uh, veteran education. So finding opportunities, growth and opportunity for veterans. And we've established something called the Military Academic Pathway Program. My area of research is psychosis and in particular I'm, I'm interested in the psychological mechanisms for why people uh, experience psychosis. So my colleagues and I have been working on an intervention referred to as metacognitive training where we encourage people to focus on these biased thinking styles or thinking distortions in the hope that if we can reduce people's susceptibility to these biases we might be able to reduce their psychotic symptoms like delusions and hallucinations and it's been shown to be quite effective at reducing delusional uh, conviction even at three year follow-up. We're now starting to adapt it to other mental health conditions such as eating disorders and I think it also lends itself to, to being administered online and that's where we're going next in the future and that dramatically improves access. Part of what Orama is designed to do is to have partnerships that have reciprocal benefit. Concordia gets the chance to be a flagship school where they're really supporting research that will go on to benefit other schools. So it's quite a noble endeavour. And from our perspective, we're really getting to see on the ground what we think works from a logical or theoretical perspective and to see how it really plays out in messy real world situations and what we need to tweak to make that fit. One of them is looking at body image. So some of the data we collected from students was telling us that um, they're not really engaged with the body image education they're already getting. So I've been able to um, access some programs that have shown really good results with the Year 8s when they're delivered by psychologists. And we're now training teachers in the school to deliver those same programs. Researching mental health and well-being is very rewarding because it improves people's, including myself, mental health and well-being. 
I didn't expect so many connections to be, for me to sort of come through the, the findings about white wellbeing. And I'm hoping that my, my thesis is an invitation to others to engage in a similar process, because through that, hopefully their wellbeing will also be boosted. I think Oromo is a really exciting initiative because it really tries to embrace the broad church, not just in terms of both well-being and mental health, but also in terms of the different disciplines involved in the research to tackle the different aspects of the questions that present when we're trying to promote well-being across the population.